NetFlow policies can also be defined under tenant policies. The NetFlow policies are defined in the analytics folder under tenant configuration. Here we can also define NetFlow records, NetFlow exporters, and NetFlow monitors. Here we've created three NetFlow records, one for each address family, CE, IPv4, and IPv6. A NetFlow exporter, which defines the reachability information for the NetFlow collector. And the NetFlow monitors, again, one for each address family. Tenant NetFlow policies can be assigned to bridge domains, under the Advanced Troubleshooting tab, again for all three address families, or under L3Out interfaces, under External Routed Networks, under the Logical Interface Profile, we have the option of defining the NetFlow Monitor policies, again for all three address family types. An additional NetFlow policy is the NetFlow node policy. By default, each switch will send NetFlow records every 60 seconds and NetFlow templates every 300 seconds. You can change this policy by defining a new NetFlow node policy. Here we've created a NetFlow node policy to send NetFlow records every 60 seconds and NetFlow templates every 60 seconds. If using a non-default policy, you must assign the NetFlow node policy to a switch profile. This is done under Switch Policies, Policy Groups, create a NetFlow policy which references the new NetFlow node policy and assign the node policy to a LEAF profile. ACI 2.2 also supports enabling NetFlow on VMware DVS switches when integrated with ACI. This is done under VM Networking, VMware, and selecting the DVS VMM integration. Here we've selected the DVS which is created via a VMM integration on ACI. And under vSwitch policies we can define a NetFlow exporter policy. Specify the destination IP address for the NetFlow co collector, the destination UDP port, 2055 in most cases, and the source IP address. The source IP address is optional. If the source IP address is not specified, each ESX host will use the management interface IP address as the source IP address for NetFlow packets. If you specify a source IP address, each ESX host in the cluster will use the source IP address specified here. After creating the NetFlow exporter policy and assigning it to the vSwitch policies, you can then modify the NetFlow active flow timeout idle flow timeout and sampling rate. To verify the NetFlow policy configuration, we can go over to the vSphere client and edit the settings on the DVS switch in vCenter. 
here, if we edit the NetFlow configuration, we can see the parameters that we configured under the ACI VMM NetFlow configuration. And the default active flow export timeout, idle flow export timeout, and sampling rate. This enables NetFlow for the DVS. The next step is to enable NetFlow for each port group where we want to run NetFlow. This is done under Tenant Configuration, under Application Profiles, EPGs, Domains. When we assign a VMM domain to an application EPG, we can enable or disable NetFlow. Here I've enabled NetFlow for the App EPG under this tenant, Tenant A. I can also verify this configuration in vCenter. Select the Tenant A Web App App EPG. Edit settings for the port group. Select monitoring and verify the NetFlow feature has been enabled for this port group. Now that we've configured NetFlow in ACI, let's verify that we're receiving NetFlow records on the collector. Here, I'm looking at the NetFlow collector, select Flow Tables, and I can see that we are receiving flow table information for flow records within the fabric. Under the network devices, I can see the IP address 1.1.0.107. These flow records were sent from this network device, which is LEAF 107. Flow records 1.1.1.1 were sent from the DVS IP address.